here in Normandy today, the American heroes coming back, honored 75 years later. Also tonight, the breaking headline back home, the deadly tragedy at West Point. A training accident, at least one dead, more than 20 injured. What we've learned about the West Point cadets, we're on the scene tonight. The emotional ceremony here in Normandy. The American D-Day heroes honored. And the remarkable moment up on that stage, what the French president did for five Americans who made the journey back. What he said to them, one event we have been following from back home and what Stan Friday told me about who this medal is really for. The dramatic rescues playing out tonight back home, a woman trapped in her car, firefighters pulling her out as it was swept away, the tornado on the ground. In Oklahoma City, a highway completely submerged and more storms coming tonight. Ginger Z is standing by. The autopsies just in tonight, the mystery widening, the woman found dead in her hotel room, then the couple found dead. What we've just learned. There is news coming in tonight on a toddler attacked and killed by a leopard at a national park. The powerful apology today in New York City from the head of the NYPD, who said it never should have happened. The dramatic scene, the player pushed at the Warriors-Raptors game. The Warriors investor banned tonight. What led to this? And stop calling. You'll want to hear this tonight about those infuriating robocalls. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir, reporting tonight from Normandy, France. And good evening tonight from Normandy. It was 75 years ago today. Thousands of Americans stormed these beaches right here behind us. So many paid with their lives. It changed the course of history, and we will have the stirring tributes we witnessed here today in just a moment. But we are following a breaking headline back home, the deadly West Point accident. A deadly training accident at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. One cadet was killed and more than a dozen others were injured. They were traveling in troop vehicles like these when one overturned on rough terrain. Authorities are on the scene tonight and ABC's Gio Benitez leads us off from the scene in upstate New York. Tonight, a military investigation is underway. Officials here at West Point are trying to understand how a vehicle overturned transporting cadets to their summer training site. They were headed to land navigation training when they were in the back of the, uh, the truck, and that's uh, when the vehicle had the accident. An Army soldier driving a vehicle like this one. 19 cadets in the back, all seniors. Tonight, we know one of them has died. The other cadets and two soldiers had non-life-threatening injuries, ranging from abrasions to a broken arm. They were part of a group of 2,400 cadets taking part in required summer training, seen in this West Point video from last summer. The vehicle involved in today's accident weighing five tons. Today was a tragic day for the West Point community in our United States Army. The president today tweeting, so sorry to hear about the terrible accident involving our great West Point cadets. We mourn the loss of life and pray for the injured. God bless them all. The cadet killed has not yet been identified. West Point officials are notifying the family. And Gio Benitez with us tonight from West Point, and Gio investigators are on their way to the scene this evening as well. That's right, David. They are on their way right now from Alabama. They should be here soon. Officials here at West Point say that this kind of accident is not common, even though they do drive through very rough terrain as part of the training. David. Gio Benitez on the West Point accident back home tonight. Gio, thank you. And we turn next here to the moving scene right here in Normandy today. It was 75 years ago today, June 6th, 1944. Allied forces stormed the beaches here. Thousands of Americans, young sons who became men. Their brave battle changed the course of history. President Trump and the First Lady with French President Emmanuel Macron and First Lady Bridget Macron standing above Omaha Beach where thousands came ashore. President Macron telling so many World War II veterans who made this trip today, France has not forgotten. President Trump telling the veterans, you are the pride of our country. For weeks here, we have followed several D-Day veterans from every corner of America who made the journey back. Today, we saw them up on that stage, and one of them had a remarkable moment with the French president. What happened on that stage, and we were waiting for 96-year-old Stan Friday right afterward. They were determined to make the journey back. The American World War II veterans who were here on D-Day, returning to the beaches hand in hand 
perfect strangers say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything you guys did for sure. Thank you. Today, that gratitude came from world leaders. The president of France, Emmanuel Macron, the first lady, Bridget Macron, landing here to thank the Americans, the Allied troops, for liberating France. <laughs> Greeting President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump, the two world leaders would take to the stage with those World War II veterans. Among them, so many of the veterans we have followed. President Macron walking up to Stan Friday from Pennsylvania. President Trump with Vincent Unger from Florida. Moments later, it was the French president shaking Vinny's hand. President Trump greeting Jack Claiborne from Tennessee. And there was Harold Himmelsbach on the left, raised in Yakima, Washington. And when the crowd gathered here, saw the veterans' faces on those big screens, the swelling applause, and then the standing ovation. President Macron saying, France has not forgotten. We know what we owe to you veterans, our freedom. On behalf of my nation, I just want to say thank you. And President Trump, who singled out so many of the World War II heroes on hand, telling them this. You are the pride of our nation. You are the glory of our republic, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And then, that rare honor, the Legion of Honor, the highest distinction from France, for five Americans, including Stan Friday, who we have followed all the way from Pennsylvania, who after D-Day went far out ahead of the rest to scope out the danger he was a scout witnessing two concentration camps before they were liberated. Monsieur Stanley Friday. Stanley Friday. On behalf of the French Republic, I award you the distinction of Knight of the Legion of Honor. Waiting for Stan right after. Hey, you know. Stan, congratulations. Thanks. You didn't tell us yesterday. Uh, they didn't tell me either. The French had reached out to him, but Stan had no idea the honor would be this grand. What was it like up there on that stage? Thrilling. Like a dream. There are only about 300 foreigners in the world who've ever been given that French honor that you were given today. Is that right? Well, that's an honor. At 96, this is Stan's first time back to Normandy. For years, he would not talk about what he saw, partly because of the friend he lost. My best buddy, his name was Monday, and we were like this, tighter than brothers. We'd give our life for each other, without a word of doubt. And we did everything together. But out on separate patrols, he would lose that friend. The medic that took care of him until he was, before he died, he, he wanted to know if I was all right while he was dying. That's how close we were. Stan remembering the brother he lost, honoring the fallen. Looking out over Omaha Beach, the two presidents and the first ladies, and the flyer. And for Stan, this day and his new medal is for all of the brothers they lost. The medal part is for the guys that's out there. They're the heroes. I'm the standby. They're the heroes. Every one of these men right I here. represent them. Stan telling me it's about the brothers who did not come home, the more than 9,000 who are buried right here behind me. And when you walk through this cemetery, you see so many crosses with that date, June 6th, 1944. We will have much more later right here on this broadcast. And then later tonight on a special edition of Nightline, Return to Normandy. We hope you'll watch or set your DVR. These veterans and what they share with us is powerful and it's a gift. But in the meantime tonight, we do turn to the other news this evening. We are following severe and now deadly storms moving across the south. A flooding emergency and high water rescues across several states tonight. Look at this. Firefighters rushing to save a woman trapped in her car underwater. 
flash flooding shutting down I-44 in Oklahoma City tonight at a tornado crossing the road near Convent, Louisiana. Tonight, new watches are in effect as more storms now take aim, and ABC's Marcus Moore is in the storm zone tonight. He's in Houston. Tonight, powerful storms turning deadly in the south. Dramatic high water rescues in Baton Rouge. Watch as firefighters race to save a woman as floodwaters carry away her car after nearly three inches of rain fell in one hour. Desperately trying to break the glass. Moments later, pulling open the door and guiding her to safety. Tragically, another driver rescued from his car did not survive. The storm's powerful winds gust up to 65 miles per hour, flipping cars at this Baton Rouge hospital. Multiple tornadoes reported in the state, a dash cam recording as this one forms, churning up debris, crossing the road near Convent, Louisiana. And five people hurt nearby at this ExxonMobil facility in Sorrento. That flooding danger extending all the way to Oklahoma City. Interstate 44 shut down. The roadway submerged. Rivers swollen. There's a lot of force in that water right there. It's going to continue to feed eventually all the way into Arkansas. This round of rain means it will take even longer for residents downstream to dry out. And Marcus Moore with us live tonight from Houston. And Marcus, Mar oh, we know Houston took a beating from storms there yesterday. And now everyone there bracing for more tonight. Yeah, that's right, David. And uh, here in Houston, there is uh, ground stops at both of the major airports as this storm is expected to perhaps bring about more flooding, heavy rain, and even strong winds tonight, David. We can see the scene right there behind you, Marcus. Our thanks to you. We're thinking about the folks in Houston tonight. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z. She's tracking it all for us. Ginger? David, Tulsa, Oklahoma, in a flash flood warning. Just one of those spots so tortured the last couple of weeks, getting more rain tonight. The flash flood watches also in the Florida Panhandle. The severe thunderstorm watches from San Antonio to Great Falls to Salt Lake City. And to bring you that rainfall map, so important along the Mississippi, they don't want it anywhere in the southeast. Georgia up through South Carolina, Pensacola, Florida, for example, at a nine-plus inch deficit going into today. They need this rain. David. Ginger Z with us tonight. Ginger, thank you. And next here, there are new developments in the three Americans who died at adjoining Caribbean hotels within days of one another. Tonight, the preliminary autopsy results are now in. We have new reporting on that. And it comes as another couple is now coming forward to say they are now suing after they got seriously ill at the same resort. ABC's chief national affairs correspondent, Tom Yamas, is on the scene tonight. Tonight, new details into how those three American tourists died in the Dominican Republic. Preliminary autopsy results show 41-year-old Miranda Werner suffered a type of cardiac arrest that led to respiratory failure. She died just two hours after checking in to a Bahia Principe resort. Her family says she had a drink from the minibar just before collapsing and dying. And authorities say Nathaniel Holmes and Cynthia Day, seen here kayaking on vacation, died the next day from organ failure. The couple found inside of their hotel room five days after Werner in an adjacent property. The information that's been released thus far does not explain sudden death in any of these people. And ABC News is learning a Colorado couple is suing the La Romana Resort. Kaylin Null telling us that last year she and her boyfriend had to leave the resort after their room reeked of chemicals, alleging it led to abdominal cramps, dizziness, and a shortness of breath. We both woke up soaked in sweat at like 4 in the morning and kind of terrified. We booked a flight home before the sun came up. Tonight, the Dominican Republic Minister of Tourism on the defense, suggesting all three deaths may well have been coincidences, and officials pointing to pre-existing health conditions in all three autopsies. Cynthia Day's family vowing to pursue this further once they have her body. We are going to continue to pursue and go where the evidence takes us. And David, tonight the big question remains, what if anything preceded the fatal medical issues for those three American tourists? Tonight, news the families back in the U.S. didn't want to hear. The toxicology results that could answer a lot of those questions could take up to a month. David? Tom Yamas and the Dominican Republic again tonight. Thanks, Tom. And a powerful apology tonight from the head of the New York City Police Department after 50 years. Commissioner James O'Neill was speaking about the raid on the stone wall in a gay bar in Greenwich Village that sparked days of protests and marked a turning point in the gay rights movement. I think it would be irresponsible of me as we go through World Pride Month not to speak of the events at the Stonewall Inn in June of 1969. Well, I'm certainly not going to stand up here and pretend to be an expert on what happened at Stonewall. 
I do know what happened should not have happened. The actions taken by the NYPD were wrong, plain and simple. The actions and the laws were discriminatory and oppressive, and for that, I apologize. Commissioner O'Neill vowed that discrimination would never happen to New York's LGBTQ community again. There was still much more ahead on. Next tonight, the billionaire investor in the Golden State Warriors pushing an opposing player during last night's NBA Finals. Tonight, the league now taking swift action. And here's ABC's Will Carr. In a highly competitive series, it's this incident on the sidelines of the NBA Finals that's evoking strong emotions tonight. Look closely, and you can see Raptors guard Kyle Lowry fall into the front row in Oracle Arena. That's when the man in the blue shirt, Warriors minority investor Mark Stevens, shoves Lowry and allegedly curses at him. He had no reason to touch me. He had no reason to reach over two seats and then say some vulgar language to me. Even the Warriors voicing their concerns. Obviously an unfortunate situation all the way around. Credit Kyle the way he handled it. You know, a lot of different reactions you could have had, um, but he handled it correctly. On Instagram, LeBron James weighing in, saying he couldn't and wouldn't be quiet about this, and there's absolutely no place in our beautiful game for that at all. And tonight, Ward the NBA has banned Stevens for one season and fined him half a million dollars. In a statement, the Warriors say they're extremely disappointed in Stevens' actions and want to offer a sincere apology to both Lowry and the Raptors. David. The index of other news tonight in a deadly leopard attack at a popular South African safari park. The two-year-old son of a staff member at Kruger National Park was attacked in their living quarters last night, taken to the hospital where he died. The leopard, who a park spokesperson says was first seen two weeks ago, was killed by rangers. Four experienced climbers are safe tonight after a dramatic rescue on Mount Rainier. The climbers attempting to summit the nearly 14,000-foot peak on a dangerous route when the weather turned Monday, stranding them. They were spotted during a break in the weather today. They were airlifted off the mountain and treated for exposure. Authorities say their experience did help them survive. And the consumer alert tonight, a possible breakthrough in the fight against all of those annoying robocalls. The FCC voting to allow telecom now, telecom providers, to block illegal and unwanted calls before they reach consumers, targeting illegal robocalls that get past that do not call registry. Americans, by the way, receive an estimated 5 billion robocalls every month. We hope this new step helps. Finally tonight here, it is hard to put into words what we witnessed here 75 years later today. Hard to describe what it's like to spend time with these D-Day veterans who made that journey returning to Normandy. As the sun came up over Omaha Beach this morning here, a trumpeter playing taps. Nearly 160,000 Allied troops landing here 75 years ago today. This photo captured that morning men from the U.S. 1st Infantry Division waiting ashore on Omaha Beach. Tonight, the artist who brings black and white photos to life in color. U.S. troops using a lifeline to rescue fellow soldiers from a landing craft struck and sunk by enemy fire. On this day, remembering the African-American troops, the nearly 2,000 that landed here on Omaha Beach in 1944. Among them, Army veterans William Dabney of Roanoke, Virginia, who served in the 320 Barrage Balloon Battalion, and Johnny Jones, who joined the Army right out of Southern University in Baton Rouge, honored with this French medal for his service. Back home today, D-Day veteran Frank DePergola of Stony Brook, New York, holding the photo of himself as a young infantryman, and Lawrence Talmonte saluting at the National World War II Memorial in Washington. These veterans are aware we lose more than 300 a day in the U.S. Most of them are now well into their 90s, and here in Normandy, they are going strong. Stan Friday, who received the Legion of Honor here today. You're 96. I'll be 97 next month. <laughs> God bless me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> What's your secret? I don't know. Yeah? No, because... And if, and if you did know, you're not going to tell me. Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll give you a hint. All right. He says, I did all the wrong things years ago. And I found out later on, they came out right. <laughs> <laughs> they sure did. We love Stan Friday, and we honor our veterans, and we honor the fallen right here behind me.